Welcome back to the Red Carpet Reup. Today we've got some spicy drama from the world of sports and music. We're diving into the recent feud between Harlem rappers Cameron and Mace and world champion boxer Shakur Stevenson. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exclusive content. Let's break it down into three key points. First, Cameron and Mace's criticism of Stevenson. Second, Stevenson's fiery response. And third, the broader impact of this feud on their reputations. Let's get into it. On their sports show, It Is What It Is, Cameron and Mace didn't hold back on their thoughts about Shakur Stevenson's performance against Artem Harutyunyan. Despite Stevenson's clear win, Mace was particularly harsh, saying he doesn't want to see Stevenson fight and calling him a defensive fighter who lacks offense and strength. Cameron added that fans were booing Stevenson at his home fight in Newark. Harsh words from the Harlem duo. Now, Shakur Stevenson didn't take these comments lightly. He clapped back hard on social media, attacking Mace's rap career and calling him a fake pastor who is more famous for his podcast. He also took shots at Cameron, challenging them both to step into the boxing ring. Stevenson made it clear he doesn't respect them and doesn't care about their opinions. So what does this mean for their reputations? For Cameron and Mace, this feud might draw more viewers to their show, but it also risks alienating some fans who admire Stevenson. <laughs> But you either got to create your offense off your jab, Tess. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBC lightweight champion of the world, Shakur Stevenson. Come on. Now you talk about we should glove up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. But nigga slap fire out you, nigga. Shut the fuck up. You, got, <laughs> you getting boxing in the streets confused, nigga. For real, nigga. Like, stop getting boxing in the street. Those are two different things, nigga. That is two different things, nigga. Because when a switchblade or something out and everything, you talk about niggas better strap up. Why would you give niggas that heads up? You dumb motherfucker. Fuck out of here, nigga. You out your motherfucking Secondly, mind. If you're, you're talking about niggas ain't legends, nigga. Mace, I'll tell you right now. And this, I'm not talking about Mace when he came out and so. Mace was Michael Jackson after Michael Jackson, nigga, before Drake, nigga. Nigga sold five million in three weeks, nigga. Fuck is you talking about? Because you don't but got no offense. You all <laughs> defense. You got the win, you got to let your hands go. Secondly, when the fight's over, Mace, I went and watched it after I seen this rant. I said, let me pay attention. I kept dozing off, but I, I managed to get through a couple rounds. After the fight's over, he walks back to the corner like this. That ain't that look like a champion. Champs don't walking around the ring diddy bopping when they beat niggas up. Your grandfather, that's how I know what your grandfather's telling you. They knew you fucked the bag up, nigga. You fucked the bag up, nigga. You supposed to show off, show out. Not only that, you was talking shit before the fight. You was the one before, I'm gonna knock this nigga out. I'm gonna demolish it, I'm gonna do all this. And you ain't do nothing you said. That's why niggas is mad. Thoroughly, pardon me, thoroughly. Yep. You get booed in your hometown. Go be mad mm -mm -mm. at them. That's your hometown. Mm, mm, mm. How you get mad because you get booed in your hometown, nigga? You know why? Because you left too early. You don't know nobody. And they're yeah. not going to put us against Gilly and Wallow. No, oh, that's another thing. That. First, yeah, yeah, first of all, yeah, 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 first of all, if we Gilly and Wallow is the that. voice of the streets, they need to be that. We wouldn't be together without Gilly and Wallow. So you wouldn't even put no battery in our back. Salute to Gilly and Wallow for even getting us back together. Somebody that's need to tell you what to say because obviously you don't know what to say. You never say, I don't care what the fans think. That's how you make your dollar. You keep talking about, oh, how they legends, they doing podcasts. This other. We make more money than you, nigga. We sit here <laughs> and make more money than you. I know you don't want to play the cash app, open your bank account game on the phone when we see each other. I know you don't want to open the phones up and see how much niggas got in the account. You made $2 million. I know you don't want no ATM, no ATM battle, nigga. Yeah, nigga, nigga don't want to, nigga, <laughs> we make more money than you, nigga. You talking about, oh, they podcast. Nigga, because we getting chicken. We make more money than you. You better come up, you want a job? We might got a job for you, nigga. 
<laughs> I try to take it easy. Yeah, Don't let me give tell me, you something. And, and, and one more let thing, me know. Mo, let me mo, tell this. Let me thing, tell this little thing, nigga mo, something, man. Last, last thing, Moto. All right, go my, ahead. My teeth from America. <laughs> I ain't go overseas. My shit's 60K, nigga. I ain't go to Dr. Rarufu, whoever his name is, Dominican Republic. My shit's American made 60. <laughs> you gonna need these, you ever fight Shakur, nigga. You better ask me which nigga, because if not, you got a DR budget that how you getting paid. You gonna have to go get your shits for 12000 <laughs> fucked up, then they have to do them all low. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, murder. <laughs> Yo, these niggas keep talking about this sweet science. Listen, boxing is also entertainment. Let me school you, nigga. So when you get in the ring, you're not entertaining. We don't want to keep hearing about the sweet science. We're looking for entertainment. <laughs> We're paying bucks for entertainment, nigga. And you're not entertaining. And somebody got to tell you this. I know you flipped out on Tim Bradley, tried to say they paid him to say that. I know you said that um Bob Arum um, panned the cam on people leaving out as you was fighting. But listen, if the fight was smoking, nobody had to walk out. You should not be the main event fighting like the undercard. Your fight was like the undercard. All the smoke was before you. So they need to rearrange how you're going. You're like a headliner that really need to be the opening act. And that's on a business sense. So you need to take note of that. As for Shakur, his strong response could be seen as a sign of confidence. But it might also come off as unprofessional to some. This clash highlights how intersecting the worlds of music and sports can sometimes lead to explosive drama. In the end, this feud is more than just words. It's a clash of egos and reputations. What do you think about this feud? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, for the latest in music and sports drama, keep it locked on the red carpet re-up. Like, share, and subscribe for more hot takes and exclusive content. See you next time.